It's here. It's October 7th, 2020, which means it is day 7 of the 31 Days of Fright Horror Movie Project, year 9. I am the one and only MSJ, Max for short, and welcome to my YouTube channel. And Remake Week continues with the 2011 version of Fright Night. But before I go any further, I want you to click subscribe. Hit the bell to stay notified. Hit the, uh, for any future videos I will be creating on this channel. Hit the like button and share this video, which helps me get my YouTube videos and channel recognized to a, a broader audience. And as well as leave a comment down below on what you think about this version of Fright Night. And as well as I have a bonus review at the end of this video. Um, thanks to um, the 13th Wolfman, but I'll get into more of that when I'm done with what telling you what you need to know about this movie is that it's essentially the same plot of the um, original, which I try not to compare it to the original or the movie that came before as much as possible. I try to not to do that because I won't review the movie on the merits of the film itself. And when the final credit rolled upon the screen is that I really liked this movie. I thought it was a lot of fun. The um, overall vibe and the just the charisma of the characters and stuff like that were great because it's about this guy who, who's really into nerdy things and he kind of kind of leaves that kind of behind him and starts hanging out with a cooler crowd where his buddy who is played by Christopher Mintz Plassey is trying to like, hey, there's people going missing in this neighborhood and one of their fellow friends isn't showing up or isn't returning his text, which is not normal. So he goes over to investigate and he ends up getting attacked by um, Colin Farrell, who is playing Jerry in this movie. I hope to God I'm getting that right. <laughs> but he, but Colin Farrell's take on this vampire is fantastic. I love his little, um, just his little mannerisms and it's like when after he just attacks someone he just the way he kind of just like wipes the blood off his uh corner of his mouth and just the way he moves and it's just like you can tell he's perfected this life of being a vampire for hundreds and hundreds of years and i love it and so anton yelchin who is playing the main character he kind of um takes upon himself to kind of investigate as well because after he, uh, his buddy goes missing uh, he starts to realize like hey things aren't quite what it seems and he may be his friend may be right um, that there might be a vampire living next door to him so and um, and in doing so he goes and gets help from this Vegas show star uh, who is played by David Tennant and just this movie is so much fun that's my like I said, that was my initial thought when the final credit rolled upon the screen was I thought this was a fun remake. Um, some times um, remakes do kind of take themselves a little too serious. Maybe you don't need to do that all the time. Like that, like to honor the remake, or to honor the original is to kind of make it stand on its own. And I know that's the whole point of some remakes, but this one really does stand up on its own. Kind of adding some little bit more humor into it. Just the charisma of the characters and stuff like that. And just it's well acted across the board from everybody in this movie. And that which makes it stand out. Especially David Tennant. When his, he's playing his character. I cannot... It's like something Vincent. Um, Chris Vincent or something like that. And he's has his two personas. Like he's on stage. And then when he goes behind closed doors. He takes off his fake mustache and beard. And just like... It's a totally different character, and it's he's kind of a coward here and there, and, and it's just really, really good, and I, it's funny. So um, that's really all I gotta say is that I highly recommend it, just for Colin Farrell's uh, uh, performance alone, because he's he plays a really good vampire, and Anton Yelchin he's very good in the lead act role. I have always been a fan of his like Odd Thomas and even when he was a little kid in um, Hearts and Atlantis he playing opposite of Anthony Hopkins in a Stephen King adaptation. I was like oh man um, which is um, connected to the Dark Tower films if you don't know that uh, but it is such a great actor and Tony Collette playing the mom. She's really good in this movie. She's, she's not in it a, a lot but her scenes are always really funny and but it's just 
that's it. Uh, that's really all I gotta say. I'm gonna, I try, I'm gonna leave my rating off this one because um, I'm really biased towards this one because I, I am a lot, I, I really, really like this movie, so. Uh, but anyways, my bonus review is um, the mask, or the wax mask. It was um, the 13th Wolfman's day number six video for the 31 days. And I, he told me that I, like, I would probably get a kick out of it or I would think it'd be interesting. And when I was watching, I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then I found out that they, it was a, re a remake of The House of Wax from 1953 or 58 or 56. One of those three years, but um, 1950s. Um, and uh, when I'm like, you know what, that'd be perfect because I'm still in the uh, remake week and I'm like, I'm on my day off so I can actually kind of do longer videos. So um, my initial thought when that final credit rolled upon the screen was I loved it. Um, I do not watch Italian horror films. That's my blind spot when it comes to horror films. I watch Japanese and uh, um, Korean and and whatever other foreign, um, foreign film, foreign uh horror films but Italian horror is kind of like my like I mentioned is my blind spot it's like the one genre of the horror thing horror genre I do not watch a lot of or know a lot about I mean I know who Dario Argento is and Lucio Fulci and stuff like that but I just don't know their filmography and then so i'm like i'll take a chance to watch this which was supposed to be um fulci's um comeback but um he passed away and if you want to know more go over to the 13th wolfman's day number six for this film to get a little better information from him out of it but i loved it i thought the graphics was great i love the practical effects mixed with the cgi for this film and I was actually like surprised that there was um, CGI in this movie. I'm like I was expecting I didn't know when this movie came out. I was just expecting um, just straight up practical effects and Italian horror films kind of have a certain feel to them. That's the one thing that I do know that makes them stand out above other horror films in the genre uh, or of like other horror films is that Italian horror movies have a certain way of filming and they feel different and I had to watch the dub version but um which was like the 13th Wolfman it wasn't that bad but I do like subtitles in my movies so I, I was kind of hoping to get a hold of the um subtitled version because I was kind of confused here and there but for all, but I but I pieced it all together once I kind of read a, a synopsis. I'm like, okay, I get, I get it now. So, but anyways, I fully enjoyed this movie. I loved it. It, I love the practical effects, I, especially when the big scene of the movie where they transform a person into a wax figure using science and. Uh, mechanical aspects and stuff like that and it's great i loved it i thought i really think that is a better scene of turning someone into a wax figure than the um house of wax um remake i just watched a few days ago with jared Padalecki's character you know they're vastly two different ways of doing it but i think the one in the wax mask was done better and it was allowed to go a little bit further and like showing a little bit more like how they pose the character and stuff like that. And I, I really like that. So, um, that was my bonus review for the day. I'll do that more throughout the month. Um, especially if it's on a week that I can do something because I have a stack of movies that just didn't quite fit within the realm of what I had planned for this month. So maybe I'll do a sequel week and then I'll just have a random horror movie that has no sequel or anything like that so be on the lookout for that so that's my first time doing this so um i highly recommend this movie if you're a fan of um italian horror if i i like italian horror films the very 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 few that i've watched i've watched suspiria 
and I something else, and then another wax mask. So it's less than five altogether. So, or that I'm aware of. So, like, if you count the um, or uh, the Argento cut of um, Dawn of the Dead. So I think a zombie, like the one where he fights the shark and the splinter through the eye, is that one um, Italian horror? If I'm wrong, please leave a comment down below. I'm probably talking out of my ass. But anyways, um, <laughs> please, leave, please click subscribe, hit the bell to stay notified, hit the like and share button, leave a comment down below because I am the one and only MSJ, Max for short, and thank you.